This is a video for how to go about creating an assembly via the top-down approach through using parametrics in Fusion 360. You will notice that I have a blank design space. To start the assembly, we are going to click Save, and I'm going to call this a parametric block. You can call it whatever you want, but for the sake of the video, I'm going to call this parametric block. And you will notice up here it says parametric block version 1. I'm going to right-click on that, and we are going to go down to new component and when we go to new component we're going to right click on new, we're going to tap on new component once and then tap on it again and we're going to call this block now we have a larger assembly here that we could activate but now we're going to be in a block that is activated we're going to go to modify and we're going to go to change parameters and we're going to click on user parameters you know we can type in the word width you can type in whatever name you want but one thing i want you to know is that if if we understand that w is width we don't have to type out the word width if we don't want to instead of typing it out every time or anything like that we can just leave with with just one letter with what we're going to design the entire design is going to be based off of one measurement so i'm going to say the entire the what's going to be based off is the width of the object so i'm just going to hit the letter w and that's what we're going to call it and we're just going to leave the expression as one now if you want to put something in the comment section down here about what it is it's going to say it's width of object you can put whatever you want in the comment section that's just kind of letting somebody who's the designer that might come into this part in fusion later that might not be you have some ideas about exactly what the letter w means and we're just going to say okay and we're going to get out of this and we're going to say okay I'm going to grab a hold of Create Sketch. I'm going to click on a surface. Now, one thing I've learned is I'm going to hit S on my keyboard, and it's going to come up with you know um, things I've most frequently used. So I've most, most frequently used line, two point rectangle, and circle. And also, you're going to notice I have my I have my sketch grid turned off over here. So I mean, I can turn my grid back on. Um, I can turn it off if I just don't want to use that. I'm going to grab two point rectangle. I'm just going to drag out, and our height is going to be W divided by 2. It's going to be the width divided by 2, and we're going to hit Tab, and we're just going to hit the letter W, and that's going to be our width. So I always have my left hand on my keyboard, my right hand on my mouse, and I don't really feel like typing a whole bunch of stuff out, so I just that's one of the reasons why I just stayed with one letter. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit Enter, and we're going to have our surface. You notice that we have a function of 1. The W we created was 1. The height is going to be half of W, which is 0.5. Finish our sketch. Let's go to Extrude. Let's click inside our object. And for the depth, we're just going to say that the depth in this case is always going to be the same as the width. Just for the sake of the video, um, you could put in anything else that you might have wanted. Um, we could say, you know, even put in sig figs. Like I could come over and say, you know, it's always W times 0.687. Just put in some weird number like that. But for the sake of the video, I'm just going to say, you know what, we're just going to stay at W. And I'm going to go ahead and say, OK. Now, we're going to grab a hold of our pencil and we want to put a hole inside this object. I could use the hole command, but in this case, I think I just want to use just a regular sketch. So we're just going to grab a hold of sketch. And we're going to click on the top of the object and we are going to click on circle. And when we click on circle, we're going to click and we're going to drag out. And let's say that this circle is going to be, you know, W divided by four is going to be our diameter. Let's go ahead and just say that that's going to be our um, diameters of our circle. It's always going to be the width divided by four. Next step. We're going to grab a hold of sketch dimension and then we need to place a location dimension. So from the left to the right, from the center to here, we're going to drag down and we're going to say it's going to be W divided by 2. And I'm going to hit enter and you're going to notice it pretty much just totally bisects our width. Next, the width was the depth divided by 2. So in this case, our depth was 1 as well. Now notice that when we're on the top view. We have width and depth dimensions if we're looking straight down on top of an object. So once again, the depth was one. So we're going to go W divided by 2 because we want it right there in the middle. And when I hit Enter, that is going to constrain that perfectly in the middle of the object. We're going to go ahead and say Finish Sketch. Let's click on our House button. Let's go to Extrude. Let's click inside the object. And we're going to drag all the way down to Cut. I'm going to look at the bottom of the object. I'm going to go to Two Objects, and I'm going to click on the bottom surface. And we're going to say OK. And what that did is no matter what we change the height to, this will always follow. We'll always go wherever that bottom plane goes. So we're now done with the block part. And we're going to create for ourselves a cylinder that goes here in the middle. We're going to come back up to parametric block and we're going to activate the larger assembly. We're going to right click and we're going to go to new component. And we're going to call this component cylinder. And I'm going to hit enter. Notice we now have this new component activated. The block looks like it's made out of water. We're going to grab a hold of sketch. 
want to make sure we click on top of the object. We do not want to click on any of these planes down here. We want to click on top of the object, and we're going to click. And you'll notice now that we have a plane going right on top of the object. I can kind of see the side and the back over here. We're going to hit P on our keyboard for project geometry, and I'm going to click on just the circle. Just the circle. And we're going to say finish sketch. And we're going to go up to extrude. And I'm going to click inside that circle. And you're going to notice that we can you know, create a solid that just kind of comes up out of it. We're going to go where it says, um, where it says, you know, one side, and we're going to go down to two sides. We could do it symmetrically, but we're not. And we're going to say we want it to come up. We'll, we'll set a distance over here um, on the side is about how far we're going to go with that. You know, the distance right now is going up 0.9. You can see that's going to be side one because you can see the numbers move. You know, over here on the other side, we're going to grab a hold of the other. Um, arrow pointing down and the other side for side two is going down that distance. We're going to click on distance and go to two object and we want to click on the bottom of the object. We want this cylinder to always come down towards the bottom. We're going to say side two right now is at 0 0.6. Let's just put in a solid number one. You know, or something, you know, we could say to keep this kind of, you know, you know, consistent is, you know, let's do this. Let's, let's, let's put in the letter W over here. It's always going to be whatever the width is. And we're going to say, okay. You're going to notice we now have for ourselves a cylinder. It's kind of inside that object. Let's go to modify real quick. And let's go down to appearance. And just to create some contrast, I'm going to go to paint. I'm going to go to glossy paint. And I'm going to drag, you know, this yellow glossy paint out onto the object. And it's going to turn a yellow glossy color. I'm going to say close. And we're going to go back up to parametric block. We're going to activate our assembly. You'll notice now that I have a block on the bottom. We have a cylinder now that is going to stay the same diameter as the hole we created. And the height is always going to be related to the parameters that we made. So we can go up to modify, go to change parameters. I have my W here as an inch. I'm going to put in, I don't know, 2.75 and let's see what happens. Click my house button. Everything automatically adapts as we go. I'm going to go back. Uh, let's go let's go something small 0 0.7 0 0.5 automatically adjusts so imagine you are creating something much more complex like a wheel and axle system for a car or even an engine or you're creating something like a phone case even that has different sizes for the different you know release versions of a phone you can have the whole thing parametrically designed from one number Remember, data drives design. Form follows function. So each of these, the cylinder functions as the data we place into parametrics. This is one of the neatest ways to go about designing anything in Fusion. You can change the numbers. It's all different kinds of things you can change. So. It's kind of neat to go in and just watch everything automatically adjust just by changing one number. So as opposed to going into every sketch and changing numbers for every sketch, we now have a top-down parametric assembly that is related to a number. So this has been a video on how to go about creating a top-down assembly in Fusion 360 through using parameters.